Ashley Fennell, and I'm the Associate Director of Government Affairs and Initiatives for ASI here at Cal State San Marcos. I've been able to watch the building of off-campus partnerships with the San Diego Food Bank and the Theme San Diego, as well as building on-campus collaborations with Student Health and Counseling Services, University Housing, and the Office of Safety, Health, and Sustainability, and so many more. In this role, I have had the honor of watching the ASI Creeker Pantry grow from an idea, to a resolution, to a mobile distribution, to an actual pantry space in the University Student Union, and then back to mobile distributions to serve students through the COVID-19 pandemic. So join us as we take you through the journey of the ASI Cooker Pantry through the eyes of the students and some staff that lived it and led this initiative. So when we first started, we had gone to the conferences for the CSUs and um, we saw how other schools had food programs or a CalFresh program, or a food pantry program and we thought that would be great to bring on to our campus. We um, did a survey for students and we saw that there was a need and we brought forth to our BOD a proposal and voted on the proposal and it passed. We didn't really even know where it would go but it had like a budget proposal, space proposal, where we, where we would get the food proposal, like all of that. Whether or not we knew it was going to be done or not, it was just like we were going to put it out there and see what would come of it. Um, during my time in ASI, we were really involved in the ground, ground floor of the Cougar Pantry and the Bite Out Hunger campaign. Food insecurity was a really big topic of conversation throughout the CSU when I became president. So that was really one of our big goals um, during our academic year was to get the Cougar Pantry up and running. So during my time as president, we were able to pass a student fee referendum, which increased um, ASI's budget. Uh, part of that budget went to the Cougar Pantry, the initial funding and remodel of the space, um, being able to employ, employ additional students and staff to, to help out with the project. Um, aside from there, during my year, we partnered with various people across campus and throughout the community just to collaborate on the best ways to start a food pantry on campus. Um, and then the Cougar Pantry was officially open the year after I graduated. So, you know, it's amazing to look back and, and see something that we had just an idea actually come to fruition. Uh, so I couldn't be more proud um, to say that I, I was part of the Fight Out Hunger campaign and I'm very much excited to the, the grand opening um, and seeing all the great work. Um, once again, just thank you for everyone, um, everyone's hard work in ASI and go to So I've been a part of ASI since 2017. I was the first year. Um, and at that time, the Cougar Pantry had just been approved by the board. And so like there was no physical space just yet. And then um, when I was the second year, when Louis Adamsell was president, that's when um, we were able to secure, secure the space. And so at that time, there was no physical space. It just was an initiative that was passed by the board. And so I've seen it grow from just pop-up tents between the USU and the arts building to uh, becoming a full-fledged, you know, pantry space. Um, and although it's small and it can only fit like three to four people at a time, I think that um, it's it's been a really great resource for students and has served so many students. Um, and so I'm very happy to hear that it's growing and it's expanding to a brand new space. And I think right now the pantry is growing and it's growing fast. I think that. Um, the space that we need, that it's going to, I think is really important. Um, I know for me, uh, being in ASI too, there would be a lot of times when I just wouldn't have time to eat or um, I would just be so stressed that I would just forget to. And so, uh, I don't know, just having the Cougar Pantry there has always been helpful. Um, I remember I would get like full on meals uh, just from the, for free from the Cougar Pantry.
So they first got the van in 2019. Um, originally, students drive to the food bank themselves with their own vehicles and pick up food that way. However, now with the van, students don't have to rely on their own vehicles to pick up or collect the food. They are now able to pick up larger quantities and um, we're no longer relying on students' own vehicles, but that's something that the pantry can call their own. So yeah, when we go to the uh, uh, North County Food Bank, we look for things specifically that students want. Um, we take in, in account that maybe some students may not have refrigeration that they can rely on. Um, we definitely look for things as college students are to eat and be willing to have in their dorms, in their house, or even like some students just come through for snacks as well. Uh, so we kind of create a balance of snacks and meals so that we have a kind of this type of um, balance of what students would eat. We collect like milk, we've collected um, salad kits, guacamole, those type of things that students would eat. Because of code regulations, we made sure that um, two people didn't, were not driving in the same van together. So Alondra would have to go to Cal State San Marcos, pick up the van, and then drive to the North County Food Bank, which is in Vista. And I would take my own vehicle and I would meet her at the food bank and we would go in together. That definition of food insecurity, it just showed me also that if someone can't cover their basic needs, like food and like water, they're not going to be able to succeed in other things. So how can we expect our students to be successful in school and graduate on time and be involved in their classes if they haven't met their um, basic needs? Yeah, so my role with the pantry um, was mostly to staff and stock the physical pantry space, um, sometimes to host our Fresh Market Monday produce distributions, but I would also shop for food at the North County Food Bank and, um, and order food online at uh, Feeding San Diego. When we moved to mobile um, distributions, the supply chains were all disrupted and um, we couldn't order food normally, so essentially Feeding San Diego would just kind of send us a pallet of 100 households worth of food. We, you know, had inventory, we knew exactly what was going on in each bag. We had a team, everything was set up on the tables in the order that it would go in the bag. So like cans first, like, you know, heavy stuff first, lighter stuff on top. I mean, we really got a good system going. And, you know, there were there were times when we're, we're serving, I want to say over 100 students Per distribution. So, you know, first we were outside the, the UVA and thankfully we could set up at the UVA because I don't know what we would have done otherwise. But yeah, we would we'd set up at the UVA, we were outside at first and then we were inside and then, you know, that was going well for a while and then we had to move back outside and then we had to like stop doing them and then we moved to the, the drive through model. I mean, my, my sincere experience with the Cougar Pantry team um, and really ASI in general, is that they genuinely are trying to serve students to the best of their ability. Hi, my name is Alondra Gutierrez and I'm the ASI Cougar Pantry Coordinator at CSUSM. As a CSUSM graduate and former ASI graduate assistant, I have had the unique opportunity to be part of the ASI Cougar Pantry story as it's grown into what it is now. We were able to make this expansion happen with funding from a grant from the CSU Chancellor's Office Basic Needs Fund, in addition to collective help from our wonderful campus and community partners. The space will also have a place where our CalFresh specialists will be able to schedule appointments with students. In the past, our CalFresh specialists would reserve study rooms in the library to assist students with the CalFresh application process.